before we start with our Bible study proper, let us pray first. Let us humble our heart and offer ourselves to the living God. Father God in heaven, we worship you and adore you. We bless and glorify your holy name, the name above all names, the name that is worthy to be praised. Father God, we ask your forgiveness for all the sins that we committed, forgive our wickedness and iniquities as we forgive to those who sinned against us. Thank you, Father God, for this day, for keeping us safe and protected. Thank you for allowing us to have another day for this Bible study, to learn from your Holy Word, to acquire wisdom and knowledge that comes from you alone. And Lord God, open our heart and mind to receive your Holy Word and help us to understand the topic that we are going to study so that we could live according to your will and righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our topic for today is taken from the scripture verse uh, in the book of Romans chapter 12. Verse 2, NIV version po ito. Ang aking babasahin. Holy Spirit, bless your holy word. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Ang title po ng uh, ating pag-aaralan for today is The Renewing of Your Mind. Apo. Let me read in Tagalog version po ng pinasa natin kanina ng scripture verse para mas maunawaan natin at maingin. Holy Spirit, bless your holy word. Huwag kayong makiayon sa takbo ng mundong ito. Sa halip, hayaan ninyong baguhin ng Diyos ang inyong pag-iisip upang maunawaan ninyo ang kanyang kalaoban, sa ganoon, magagawa ninyo kung ano ang mabuti, kalugod-lugod, at ganap na kalaoban ng Diyos. Amen? The renewing of your mind. In Romans 12 chapter 2, sinasabi po dito is about renewing your mind. Renew means to make like new. And what does it mean? It means shifting your patterns in focus that can change your life. Changing the way you think to create a better life for yourself and the life that honors God. The world and society have patterns or ways that lead to a broken life. Yan po ang buhay ng ating mundo. If we follow the pattern, usually it ends up with a broken life. Kaya nga po, sinabi sa Romans chapter 12 that the verse 2 is we have to renew our mind. Now, the question is, are you living the best of your life? Maybe yes or maybe no. Yan. Um, well, ang... Um, Routines or repetition na yan, yan po yung pattern na ginagawa natin everyday sa buhay natin. Ito po yung uh, mga mahirap i-transform or baguhin sa buhay natin sapagkat we are doing it mindlessly without any consideration of our actions or even yung mga consequences because we are used to do it. Kumbaga, nasanay na tayo na ginagawa natin ito every day. And what are the patterns of this word that Romans chapter 12 verse 2 want us to conform? Anyway, to conform means is ito yung standards, ito yung laws, or comply with laws. And uh, in a person, uh, ito po yung, yung behavior according to socially acceptable conventions or standards. Yun po yung sinasabi nilang pattern. Yan, na though 
most of the time, yung pattern na sinusunod natin sa mundong ito is hindi according to the will of God. Kasi po, uh, most of the time is nagiging based ang pattern through immorality which is not good. Hindi lang po yun, marami pang pattern or repetition na mga irregular talaga. Basically, a pattern occurs when one or more symbols repeat. Yan nga po, yung paulit-ulit, uh, yung structured ways na siya. One of the examples of the pattern is, uh, para mas may maintindihan po natin kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng pattern nito, is yung, number one, for example, yung traffic light. Yung traffic light po, mayroon tatlong color yan. May green, may yellow, and red. Yung green, actually, mag uh, iilaw siya ng yellow, magbibling siya for seven times. Ibig sabihin po nun, is mag red light na siya. And then kapag nag-red light siya, mag-wait ka ng 3 minutes to become green again. So, may pattern po yan. So, every 3 minutes, magiging green siya. And then, magiging green siya for a couple of seconds only. Most probably, then, mga 30 seconds. Then, after 30 seconds, mag-blink naman uli yung yellow light for 7 times hanggang sa maging red light siya. Magiging full stop siya. And then, maghihintay ka again ng 3 minutes. Yun po yung pattern na gusto kong example sa inyo to understand what the pattern means. And number 2 examples po is yung morning routines na meron tayo every day. Like, pagising sa umaga, we wake up, then of course we pray, we go to the toilet, we take a bath, and we do everything, we toothbrush, we, and then after that, we eat breakfast, and then go to work. Yan ginagawa po natin to every day. Ito po yung pattern na sinasabi ko na na behavior natin na we do it every day without um uh, without even thinking but subconsciously we are doing it na. Kung yun, na kung sana po naiintindihan niyo yung ibig kong sabihin. Ngayon, what are the patterns that Roman chapter 12 verse 2 is implying? Well, ang sinasabi po dito na pattern ng mundong ito is yung sinful pattern na pinapabago sa ating isipan. Well, ano-ano nga po pala yung sinful pattern na yon na sinasabi sa, sa verse 2 na yon. Well, ang sinful patterns na yon or behavior is an immoral or ungodly act po. Where do our sinful patterns came from? Yan po yung question. Well, the scripture is quite clear that our sins comes from evil desires of our old nature. Masasabi po natin ito or mababasa natin ito sa James chapter 1 verse 15. Ano po ba ang sabi doon? Ang sabi doon, bless your holy word, holy spirit, then when desire conceives, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is full grown, it gives birth to death. Ano po ba ibig sabihin ng basahin po natin sa Tagalog para mas maintindihan natin ang version na ito. Now, basahin po natin yung Tagalog version ng James chapter 1 verse 15. Holy Spirit, bless your holy word. At ang pagnanasa kapag naitanim sa puso ay nagbubunga ng kasalanan. At ang kasalanan sa hustong gulang ay nagbubunga ng kamatayan. Amen? The best way to identify sinful patterns is to have a list. Kailangan meron po tayong listahan. And what are this list? Uh, yung mga list po ng sin eh, actually nakasulat naman siya sa Bible ano po ba yung mga sinasabi ng Biblia sa atin na mga listahan ng kasalanan Ayan. I have few uh, scriptural verses na ina-identify ng Bible kung ano po yung mga kasalanan ito unang basahin po natin sa Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21. Holy Spirit, bless your holy word. As I read, Now, 
the works of the flesh are manifest, which are this, adultery, fornication, unclean, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, revealings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, basahin po natin siya sa Tagalog para mas maintindihan natin yung sinasabi ng Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. Kung ano po yung mga klase ng kasalanan na sinabi sa Biblia. Ang sabi po dito sa Galatians, in Tagalog version, hindi maikakaila ang mga gawa ng laman, pakikiapid, kahalayan at kalaswaan, pagsamba sa Diyos-Diyosan, pangkukulam, pagkapuot, pag-aaway-away, pagsiselos, pagkakagalit at kasakiman, pagkakampi-kampi at pagkakabaha-bahagi, pagkainggit, ipagpatay paglalasing walang habas na pagsasaya at iba pang katulad nito muli ko kayong binabalaan ang gumagawa ng mga ito ay hindi magkakaroon ng bahagi sa kaharian ng Diyos Amen ayan po napakaliwanag na sinasabi sa Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 kung ano yung mga uri ng kasalanan na hinahalin tulad or in example na dapat nating iwasan which is the pattern of this word. Actually, hindi lang po yan ang nabanggit ni Apostle Paul sa Galatians, uh, sa book of Galatians. May nabang, na, binanggit din niya po ito sa book of Ephesians na, na, na isinulat niya na uri din ng mga kasalanan. Hayaan niyo pong basahin ko din to. Sa Ephesians chapter 5, verses 3 and 2, 5 naman po siya. Holy Spirit, bless your holy word. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking which are out of place, but instead Let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous has no inheritance in the kingdom Christ of God. So mapapansin niyo po, the same uh, din halos ang sinasabi sa Galatians, which is with this kind of sins, eh, hindi natin mamanahin ang kaharian ng Panginoong Hesus sa kalangitan. Yan. Hindi ko na po babasahin in Tagalog and another verses din po na nagpapatibay ng mga kasalanan na any example ng ating Biblia or, uh, para sa pattern of this word na dapat nating malaman. So, maging aware tayo is also nakasulat din siya sa Colossians chapter 3 verses 5 verses 7, 8, and 9. Yan, basahin ko po uli. Holy Spirit, bless your holy word. Ang verse 5, Put to death therefore what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covet- covetousness, which is idolatry. And sa... Number, uh, verse number 8 but now you must put them all away anger wrath malice 
slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. And verse 9, do not lie to one another. Ayan. Though yung iba po umulit, pero may mga dagdag po siya na uri ng mga sinful patterns of this world that even without knowing it, is uh, ginagawa ng mga tao or even ginagawa natin kahit tayo po ay mga kristyano na. Ngayon, let's uh, study all of these verses para malaman natin sa ating sarili kung are we doing it and if we are doing it, better na iwasan natin to or don't do it na rin po. And of course, mayroon pang isang verse na nagsasabi ng, ng mga sinful patterns sa mundong ito is matatagpuan din sa Romans chapter 1 verses 29 to 31. Take note of this po, yung mga four verses, four books na, na aking uh, binanggit at ating pinag-aaralan kung ano-ano yung mga uri ng kasalanan. Ngayon, isasummarize ko na lamang po yung verses 29 to 31. Ang mga sins na binabanggit dito is envy, murder, strife, deceit, craftiness, gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, or evildoers po yan, rebellious towards parents, yan yung mga nagre mga anak sa kanilang mga magulang is kasalanan din po iyon. Foolish, faithless, yung mga walang pananampalataya sa Diyos, hurtless, walang puso, and ruthless. Yan. Usually, yun yung mga wicked, mga walang awa. Yan. Actually, kung kayo din po ay uh, familiar sa seven dead scenes na tinuro ng when we were still not born again sa Roman Catholic theology, i- i- idadaan ko lang it, po ito just for the information, uh, dinefine po nila yung seven deadly sins then, which is yung also a behavior patterns or feelings that uh, inspire to have more sin, yun pa, to sin further. These are the sins na po, it, ito po yung mga sins na yon is yung pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. Opo, yung sloth is yung po yung laziness. Yan, being lazy is also a sin din po. Now the question is, how to defeat these sins? Can we defeat these sins? Yan. To win a battle, You have to know your enemy. In this case, our biggest enemy po is ourselves. We have gotten used to this sin, even many times preferring it the right living. May, maybe justifying it or encouraging it with our thoughts, it may seem non-consequential compared to other sins or it is unimportant. Pero nagkakamali po tayo. Because God says, all sins lead to death. Yun po yung sinabi niya sa Bible. At ang sinasabi sa Bible, sapagat sinabi ito ng Panginoon, lahat ng kasalanan ay nagli-lead sa kamatayan. So we have to defeat our sins. How do we defeat all the sins po? Again, to defeat the sins is by renewing your mind. Amen? Now, how to renew your mind? Paano nga po ba? Let us study about it. Pag-aralan po natin kung paano natin babaguhin ang ating mga pag-iisip upang ito po ay maging uh, pattern sa ways and wills ng ating Panginoon sa kanyang ikakalagod. There are people that have been Christians for so many years. Yet, they are still baby Christians. Baby Christians are new to the things of God. But God needs you to grow up and mature in order to fulfill His will for your life. Now, what's the difference between a baby Christian and a mature Christian? The difference is 
yung mature Christian po is renewed na yung kanyang mind. And of course, yung baby Christian, hindi pa. Because they are still, because God are still renewing their mind actually. So, nasa molding period pa sila, nasa pagbabagong period pa sila. Pero yung mga mature Christian, sila po yung renewed na ang kanilang pag-iisip. Now, renewing your mind is the foundation of your spiritual growth and maturity. Then, why do we need to renew our minds? Bakit nga po ba kailangan natin baguhin ang ating pag-iisip? Here are some several reasons why we need to renew our mind. Renewing your mind with the Word of God will, of course, strengthen your spirit to fulfill God's will for your life, number two. And number three, it will make your faith strong. And number four, you will learn to think how God thinks and speaks how God speaks. Paano po yun? Of course, if you are uh, reading the Word of God, uh, you will know how He thinks and how He speaks by the words you are reading in the Holy Bible. And of course, in number five, it will help you keep your eyes on Jesus in times of difficulties. Yung po, yung mga renewed mind na bilang isang mature na Christian. Yan. And ano ba yung mga steps na dapat natin gawin para ma-renew yung ating mind? Especially sa mga baby Christians pa, uh, they were actually questioning, of course, how to re, how do we have a renewed mind like a mature Christian? Ano ba yung mga ginagawa ng mga matured Christian na hindi ginagawa ng mga baby Christians? Yan. Dito na po mag-uumisa yung ating pag-aaral. I will share you some steps of how to renew our mind. Mayroon tayong four points na pag-aaralan regarding this. Number one point po is study and apply the word of God. Opo, sabi po sa Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, Holy Spirit, bless your holy word. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you will may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Yan. Ano po ba ang sinasabi doon? The Bible is God's manual for us. Yes po, maliwanag yun. Yung Biblia po ay manual ng buhay natin. Actually, yan. It is a guide that will help us to be what? Successful in this world if we follow it. So, in order to know what the guide says, we need to study it. Going to church in a regular basis is not enough. You have to study the Word of God and meditate on it and do everything it says. Yun po yung sinasabi sa Biblia. Amen? And of course, yung number two or point number two is control your thoughts. Yes po, being a matured Christian, uh, sa mga renewed mind is we have to control your thoughts. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, sinasabi po doon, Holy Spirit, bless your holy word, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinions raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Many people think they do not have control over their thoughts. Yun po ang iniisip nila. Wala akong control sa isipan ko. Nakakapag-isip ako lagi ng masama. Kung ano nakikita ko sa paligid ko, it's, hindi ko makontrol siya. Na it's either I will think of something most of the time, hindi maganda. Well, the Bible clearly states that here that we can take captive or dismiss any thoughts that don't align with the Word of God. You are in control. We are in control. You can choose your thoughts. When something pops in your head, 
can you know that you shouldn't be thinking about that you can replace that thought with a different one your mind is a powerful and you need to learn to control it and not let it control you the way that you control it is by staying away from thoughts that are not a blessing to you and instead meditate on the word of god yun po ang pinakamainam nating gawin if every time na mayroon tayong naiisip na hindi maganda palitan po natin ito ng isang positive na thought and of course let's always stay away sa mga negative thoughts sapagkat lumalayo tayo sa blessing but instead meditate on that positive thought which is the word of God when we hear bad news Kapag ka nakakarinig po tayo ng mga news na hindi magaganda sa radio, sa TV, or even sa, of course ngayon sa social media, sa internet, ang dami na hindi magandang balita. Our first thought are usually is yung worst case scenario, yung lahat ng hindi maganda. Because yun ang ibinabalita sa atin. But when we renew our mind, those thoughts are automatically replaced by the word of God. And His promises. Yun. Your thoughts can get you in trouble kapag ka medyo hindi maayos yung pag-iisip mo. God, uh, to the Word of God, uh, go to the Word of God instead and make His Word your thoughts and cast down any other thought that goes against the will of God. Yan po yung mga scheme ni Satan, yung mga tactic ni Satan is give us a negative thoughts because he is really want us to be tormented in our thoughts at maisip natin of course that uh, uh, he is the one actually condemning us in our thoughts but it is not it is not the will of god na mag-isip tayo ng hindi maganda always think na we are already forgiven by god yes we are sinners but we are already forgiven and this is because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And point number three is be careful with what you are feeding your mind. Apo, mag-ingat po tayo sa inilalagay or pinapakain natin sa ating pag-iisip. Opo, paano ba natin pinapakain ng ating pag-iisip? Kumakain pala yun? Nagugutong pala yun? No, hindi po yung ganun ang ibig sabihin. Basahin po natin ang Romans uh, chapter 8, verses 5 to 6. Sinasabi doon ay, Holy Spirit, that's your holy word. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, Set their mind on the things of the Spirit. For the set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. Yan po, napakaliwanag. Kapag ang pag-iisip natin ay makamundo, tayo po ay nagiging makamundo. At ang resulta nito ay kamatayan. But if we set our mind in the spirit, ito ay buhay na walang hanggan. Sapagat spirit is life at mayroon siyang peace. Yun po ang sinasabi ng Romans 8, chapter 5, verse 5 and 6 kapag binasa po natin ito. Amen? And point number 4 is develop a strong relationship with God. Yun po yung pinakamainam nating gawin. To develop a strong relationship with God. And how do we do that? Basahin po natin ang book of James chapter 4 verse 8. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. And how do we do that? Yun po. Anyway, Jesus paid an enormous price Not only for our sins, for your sins, but also so that you can have a relationship with 
the Father, our God. The more we spend time with a person, the faster we get to know them, di po ba? If you spend more time with your friend, mas lalo mo siya nakikilala. If you spend more time with your uh, brethren sa atin kapatiran sa Holy Joy Church, mas lalo mo silang nakikilala. Do makikilala mo sila kung especially yung mga mature Christian, how deep really they are with their relationship sa ating Panginoong Ama at maging sa ating Panginoong Yeshua Hamasaya. Same things happen din po with God. The more we spend time with Him, the more we get to know Him. Nothing will help you to renew your mind more than developing a strong relationship with God. And part of that is to know Him through His Word. Ano po ba yung word na yun? Of course, by reading the Bible. Remember, God is looking for a relationship with you. He wants to be a part of your life, part of your everyday. And Jesus said, He will never leave us or forsake us. So He is with you all the time. Talk to Him, listen to Him, get to know Him through His Word. Amen po. I-summarize ko lang, brothers and sisters, yung steps to renew your mind na na-discuss na natin is, number one is to study and apply the Word of God. And this is through reading, of course, the Holy Bible. Number two is to control your thoughts. Yan, wag po tayo mag anything that is negative. Yan. And number three, of course, is be careful with what you are feeding your mind. Yan po. Dapat ang binabasa natin lagi is laging Word of God. And kung manunood tayo or kung nakikinig tayo is more on sa preaching ni Lord which is positive. Iwasan po natin yung mga negative things. And of course, yung number four is develop a strong relationship with God. Yun nga po. Yun ang pinakamagandang gawin natin. To have a renewed mind. Amen? Now, brothers and sisters, uh, sa mga kapatid sa pananampalataya na hindi pa nakakatanggap sa ating Panginoong Yesus, ay inaanyayahan ko po kayo na sabayan ako sa panalangin ng pagtanggap sapagkat napaka-importante po ito sa Buhay Kristiyano, ang tanggapin ang Panginoong Heso Kristo sa puso natin bilang Panginoon at tagapagligtas. Ngayon sa mga nanonood o nakikinig na hindi pa tumatanggap sa Kanya, hayaan niyo po na i-guide po kayo sa panalangin at samahan niyo ako o sabayan niyo ako sa nagamit ang inyong boses, nagamit ang inyong bibig sa panalangin ito na aking sasambitin din at uulitin nyo nang sa ganun uh, mag-guide ko kayo but in your heart there is conviction that you are accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in your life. Okay po, let us pray. Dear God in heaven, I know that I am a sinner and I need a savior. I want to turn away from my sinful life to the life you have planned for me. Please forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me of my past. Make me new. I know your son Jesus Christ died for me. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. At this very moment, I accept, confess, and proclaim Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. To live in my life, to live in my heart, from this day forward. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace that has saved me from my sins and has given me eternal life. Please 
send your Holy Spirit to guide me and help me to do your will for the rest of my life. Write my name in the book of life in heaven and I am willing to undergo water baptism. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Ayan, mga kapatid, sa mga sumabay po sa aking panalangin, binagalan ko po so that you could follow, kayo po ay ganap na tumanggap sa ating Panginoong Yeshua, Masaya, or Jesus Christ, bilang iyong Panginoon na personal at tagapagligtas. In conclusion po sa ating topic for today, the renewing of your mind, let me explain to you or balikan natin yung Romans 12 chapter 2 which is yung ating scriptural verse. Ang meaning po noon is uh, God doesn't want you to think like the word thinks. Yun po. Kasi po yun yung pattern of this word. Ayaw ng Panginoon na tayo ay mag-isip kung paano mag-isip ang mundong ito. His word is life and help. Full of promises, abundance, healing, and deliverance. This is the life He wants for you. He wants you to change the way you think so you can access everything He has for you. His word is the key to overcome the devil and to live a successful life. He wants to teach you through His Word how to deal with life and everything in it. By replacing the old way of thinking with the Word of God, you will be more like your Heavenly Father, which is holy and righteous. Renew means to replace. Baguhin ang lahat-lahat sa atin. So, renewing your mind means replacing the old way of thinking with the new way. Of course, ito po yung sinful patterns or sinful ways na pinag natin kanina. In Book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, ang sabi po doon, And to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Being renewed you must think whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is anything worthy of praise and excellence, think about these things. Nababasa po natin siya sa book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Yung mga nabinanggit ko niya. And therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Second Corinthians, verse 2. Chapter 2, verse 16. Amen. That concludes po ang ating Pag-aaral for tonight. God bless everyone. And let's have a closing prayer sa ating Bible study. Again, let's humble our heart. Let's open our mind sa ating Panginoon na nakikinig at walang sawang nagmamahal sa atin. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the knowledge that we acquired for today's Bible study. Thank you for the people that you've touched to listen to your holy words. Father God, please make us a wise person. Give us your wisdom. Give us your knowledge. Give, make our heart pure, Lord God. Peace-loving, gentle, submissive to you, full of mercy and sincere bless us with incorruptible wisdom Panginoon that will earn us an abiding success 
Let our blessing stand out so that all people may praise your name, the name above all names. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Shalom, brothers and sisters. God bless everyone.